guys welcome back to my channel i'm okoyemi goddess and if you're new to this channel thank you so much for stopping by and um if you're a returning subscriber thank you guys for always returning to my channel i love you guys and i celebrate you as always anyways today i'll be talking to you about something very interesting <laughs> and this is something i'm very very knowledgeable about so today i'll be talking to you about um nursing roles that do not really require direct contact with patients should I just say non-traditional nursing jobs or non-clinical nursing jobs or specialties, nursing specialties that do not require you to, you know, stay with the patient for 24 hours or really have direct contact with the patient. So I know this because I don't like bedside nursing. I've never liked bedside nursing and I've actually never worked on the word like per se. So yes, so I know so much about this and I will just be helping one or two people who really do not like bedside nursing or you even don't even like the hospital setting at all i will give you the options that we have in the uk options available you know here in the uk that you can choose from trust me there are several options that you can choose from don't let anybody tell you that as a nurse especially here in the uk that you can, you can only work in the hospitals no we have a lot of other options as nurses we have several capacities that we can work in as nurses and um so and working in these roles or in these positions will not make you less of a nurse so you're still a nurse you still have your pin you still have your license so don't let anybody make you feel less of a nurse because you do not like bedside nursing or because you do not want to work in the typical hospital environment anyway so let's get started so should i call this one semi-clinical <laughs> semi-clinical roles if there's anything like that anyways the first is theater nursing you guys can tell already um i say this every time i'm a theater nurse i've always loved theater nursing yes. theater nursing is amazing it's an amazing career of course it's still part of nursing anyways it's an amazing specialty i think that's the best way to put it it's an amazing specialty you don't get to interact so much with the patient the only time you get to the patient is when the patient is in the operating room and maybe when the patient is in the recovery room but the little time you have with the patient you ensure that you maximize it properly and that's why i like it like i don't have so much contact with the patient but that little time i have with the patient is always amazing i try my best to to now provide my nursing care in that little time i get to spend with whatever patient i have in the operating room so that's that about about theater nursing it's exactly very amazing you also have to be very smart so it's not for lazy people you have to you need stamina to be a test nurse because you would end up sta standing for several hours yeah i know that is one good reason why people do not like test nursing but i don't mind i really love it so if you don't like bedside nursing you may want to consider test nursing especially if you like being in the whole hour the operating room so if you're someone that likes um surgery you like the theater environment i think this would be a very good specialty for you the next specialty that you might want to explore as a nurse who doesn't like bedside nursing is outpatient clinic nurse so as you all know the outpatient um, clinic they, they normally do not admit patients so patients will never stay in the outpatient clinic for more than a few hours really you just come for your clinic appointments and in few hours or even few minutes you're actually done like it doesn't take too much time if you've been for doctor's appointments in the past you know that in 30 minutes you're done maybe one hour you don't like so you don't as it as as um an outpatient clinic nurse you don't get to stay with a patient for a very long time so rather than being with the same set of patients for several hours several days or even months as a bedside nurse it's it's the opposite as an outpatient nurse if you work as an outpatient nurse you see several patients in a very small amount of time do you get my point so you don't get to spend a lot of time with the patient and um the patients are not like so ill like that they're not like critically ill patients most of them are ambulatory patients they can actually move on their own or maybe with the aid of um you know um their their, their loved ones or something so it's not like they're critically ill like that so they don't really require a lot of nursing care what they usually require i mean is probably check their vital signs um do um some quick um tests say like urine testing you take their blood samples pretty much you know little 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 things like that maybe you want to take um um pap smear samples it's really not like you're, you're giving you know holistic nursing care so this is also a bit flexible 
especially for people who do not like so much stress and we all know how nursing can be stressful so if you want um a stressless should i say it's stressless because it's not really like stressless no nursing position or nursing role is actually stressless so but if you want a specialty that doesn't give so much stress you know like the world or like the setters you may want to consider outpatient clinic nurse so that's that the next one is um the gp nurse and it's funny because they also say practice nurse so for the practice nurse what you do is also similar to the outpatient clinic nurse because for gps if you know what gp means gps are more like okay so gp stands for general practitioner or general practice as you may want to call it so more like what we call uh health centers back home so they're still like hospitals but like primary healthcare hospitals i really i'm looking for the right word now so more like health centers because they don't admit patients like um they see patients on more like outpatient basis so do you get the see patients and then refer so if it's like um a very severe case they can refer to either a general hospital or a tertiary hospital a teaching hospital whatever the case may be you know depending on the severity so if a patient really needs to see a specialist then they refer the patient but what gps do basically is to treat minor illnesses say like asthma like diabetes like um hypertension copd they they don't just treat anyways they manage so you see people in and out of their gps because they live with long-term you know diseases like i just mentioned so they have to be in and out so as a gp nurse or as a practice nurse that's all you do you see patients you do wound dressing you teach you give health education as well yeah they do that a lot you take blood samples you not just blood samples even pap smear samples whatever sample that's required they do minor testings as well like i mentioned for outpatient clinic nurses during testing you know they just do they treat minor illnesses really and um yeah basically that's what they do and they also help to manage long-term diseases or long-term illnesses so that's basically what they do it can't be stressful trust me so it's not like practice nursing is like absolutely stress-free no it is true it, it is a bit stressful as well because if you if you actually speak with few practice nurses they will also tell you oh it is stressful but the good thing about it is that it is actually very flexible especially people who have child care responsibilities so you can in most gps you can actually state the number of hours you want to work say oh i want to work for 30 hours i can't do 37.5 hours i mean if you're not bound by um your visa category if you can actually work part-time then it is always allowed and um, especially if you don't want to work weekends gps really work on weekends some do saturdays but it's very rare most of them work from mondays to fridays say like um 8 a.m to maybe 6 p.m or maybe 7 p.m maximum i know most gps close by 6 p.m most times or some wait like 7 p.m and they really work on weekends maybe maybe skeletal duties on saturdays but they don't even open on sundays so that's that about practice nursing you may want to consider that really another thing about practice nursing is when you get so much experience in that field you can also go for um nurse practitioner course which is like another master's degree in that in that in that regard and um, if you become a nurse practitioner and you take some prescribing courses you can actually be a prescriber a nurse prescriber and then you can see patients in the capacity of a doctor so you become licensed to prescribe drugs and um, you can consult on your own meaning that patients who come do not necessarily have to see a doctor you can actually consult and treat patients as well the next specialty that you may want to pursue if you don't like the hospital environment is community health nursing so for community health nursing it's it's more like what we call primary health um nursing back home or public health nursing back home so what they do is they don't work in a typical um, hospital setting they don't even work in the hospital they are like community nurses so they go to people's houses i think they call it home health nursing in the u.s so it's just something similar to that they go to patients houses or should i call them clients because they're not like very sick patients maybe patients that need um injections um insulin maybe a diabetic patient that needs um, insulin on a daily basis so they go to those patients houses they give the injections um um or patients that just need follow-up and all that maybe patients need a um, change of stitches change of dressing Oh, basically just you know simple simple things like that and um or maybe a patient is asthmatic 
and needs to have um certain drugs to treat the asthma and maybe the the drugs needs to be taken every day and all that so that's basically what community health nurses do so more like they take nursing to patients homes so more like they deliver health care to the patient homes that's what they do and um, it's also very flexible trust me because you have the time to yourself more like they just drive around go to patients a's house um administer nursing care go to patients b's house administer nursing care so it is very very flexible i know a lot of people who don't like the stress of the hospital so they would rather be a community health nurse so that's a very good specialty the next on my list is the occupational health um, nurse or occupational health nursing so for these people they work in workplaces a lot of them also work in hospitals but you don't necessarily have to work in a hospital you can work in industries and in, you can work with some companies you can work in factories you can literally work anywhere as an occupational health nurse because what they basically do is um to what they do is related to health and safety really so they prevent occupational health hazards occupational hazards sorry so they kind of prevent occupational hazards they give a lot of health education trust me they give a lot of health education just to prevent you know hazards at work workplace hazards um and then when people come down with injuries at work they 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 kind of now step into the situation so say for instance you work in a hospital and you just you just had um a needle stick injury the next thing to do is to report to the occupational health department an occupational health nurse would see you um take your blood samples tell you the next step to take for instance see if they have to put you on say pp that's um post exposure prophylaxis so they're more like take decisions in case of any hazard at work they, but they, they try their best to prevent those hazards by putting measures in place health educating members of staff as well they also give vaccinations i know occupational health nurses they give a lot of vaccinations to staff members and um, they take samples as well they take blood samples for testing so that's basically what they do it is very very flexible they don't work weekends a lot of them do not work weekends a lot of them work from monday to fridays and i think they do nine to five i think or eight to four like it is very very flexible so if you have child care responsibilities and you don't want to do night shifts or you don't want to be on calls you don't want to work weekends occupational health nursing is a very good um, specialty that you may want to consider okay so the next one is um, um research nursing so what research nurses do is um anyways i've read about a few of them and i know a few of them what they basically do is like um they participate in, in in surveys they participate in studies research just like the name sounds they participate in research studies and research um surveys more like that so they they kind of um gather data for for research um studies so so like clinical a clinical trial is about to commence they'll be in charge of that so they want to test a, a particular drug on certain clients on volunteers they're in charge of that or they need to get um data for it but maybe they need to um distribute questionnaires i mean things in that regard when it comes to research it could be uh, related to um um drugs or medications and it may not even be related to that it may just even be maybe surgical in nature surg surgical research medical research things like that that's what research nurses do and trust me their work is also very flexible because they don't have to work week even if they work weekends it's not like they are mandated to so it is very very flexible as well and you may want to consider so that the next specialty you may want to consider is um school nursing so as a school nurse what you will be required to do is to take care of children so you're not like i'm not saying you're like a teacher uh, or you're like um, a nanny or something no like when children in school have injuries or say they have um or maybe they just they just feel sick you know while in school they take them to the school clinic and then as a school health nurse you're meant to as a school nurse you're meant to attend to those kids give them first aid yes so you give them first aid say a child just bro broke his ankle for instance you give first aid immobilize the ankle just pretty much first aid you do get emergency management of accidents of injuries and then an ambulance can now take the child to the hospital so that's basically what school nurses do they just give 
um, first aid they also like uh, manage minor illnesses maybe before the parents will come and pick up the child or before the child is taken to the hospital so that's that about school nursing and um, it's also flexible they work from mondays to fridays i mean schools don't open on saturday so it's very flexible you get to have your weekends to yourself and you don't get to work night shifts like most schools are closed before before six maximum so by six you're done you're home already and you don't get to work weekends you don't get to work nights you are not on call and all that so it's actually a very amazing special i would say the next on my list is fertility nursing so what fertility nurses do basically what it so fertility nurses actually work with um specialists like um fertility specialists so they work hand in hand with um fertility specialists so if you're very passionate about fertility or if you have um a lot of interest in women's health you may want to con consider fertility nursing as a specialty so what they do is um I know for a lot of fertility nurses, patients get to see them before they see um, the fertility specialist because they work as a team anyway. So if you have any fertility concerns and you get referred by your GP, for instance, to a fertility, a fertility specialist, the fertility nurse too would also see you and um, will conduct some assessment on you. They also guide you along the way through your fertility journey as well. So say you, you're experiencing fertility, say you want to, I'm just trying to create a scenario, say you want to maybe do an IVF, a fertility nurse would guide you they would also give health education as well they'll give health education they help in inter interpreting results as well so say you just had a test done relating to facility they would interpret the test to you um they will let you know what that means what should be done and all that so basically they work with fertility specialists so um they give health education they also um they just they just i feel like they just help we, they help to make the journey a bit easier for you if you're like on a fertility journey they make um the journey easier and they also consult in clinics as well so if you're going to a fertility clinic as well you might get to see a fertility nurse as well who would consult you see you and all that so if you actually like women's health you like things related to women or women's sexuality as well if you if you are just interested in um gyne issues women and um our sexuality as women as well you may want to consider fertility nursing it's actually very interesting so the next on my list is um a disability assessor nurse so basically what they do is and the, fu the fun thing about this job is that you can actually do it remotely because i remember that the offer i even got then was even for a remote position so i don't even have to come physically to my workplace i'll be doing it remotely so what they do is just by what the name says a disability assessor nurse what they do is assess disability but i think this role is 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 kind of related to disability in children anyways the ones i get to see online so what these nurses do is they assess disability in whether adults or ch children they would always specify anyway so say for instance a child has um developmental delay do you get maybe the child hasn't started speaking yet at a certain age that is expected of that child the child isn't walking yet at a certain age expected of that child or the child is showing some signs maybe of autism whatever it is any any form of developmental delay or any sign that it, the child has some some you know some um, disability so that's what a disability assessor nurse does so for this role you'll be trained for the job so it's not like Maybe as I'm tether, as I'm a tether nurse at the moment, I'll just get the job and then I'll start assessing children or adults. How am I supposed to know how to assess that? So what they do is they actually give training. So I think for the first six weeks of the role of, of the position, you would actually be trained properly, you know, on how to assess um, people and how to know if they actually have disabilities or not. So it is actually very interesting, especially if you're if you're very very keen or very passionate about disability i feel like you have to be very passionate about people living with a form of disability because if you're not passionate about it you will not see things the way they are seeing it so someone can feel like they are actually disabled and you may feel like they're not disabled because they look pretty they look good but if if you have that same passion for that job i feel like you'll find it very interesting and then you realize that someone can look all together lovely and still live with a certain level of um, disability so basically what they do is assess disability they assess if the person has 
um a form of disability and the, the severity as well the extent and then they cannot refer and all that and then find the solution to that so they can refer to the appropriate um specialist so say a child has not spoken when he's meant to speak they cannot refer to a speech therapist and and all that so that's what they do okay guys so the last on my list which is the favorite or my favorite yeah this is my favorite and that's a nursing lecturer position or a nursing tutor position or a nursing instructor position. You can call it any name, but basically lecturers in, in universities, especially um, lecturers, nursing lecturers working in department of nursing. So basically what you do, you already know anyways, as a lecturer, you teach. So you're actually a teacher, a university teacher now. So you, you, you teach nursing students. So that's basically what you do. So if you like teaching, if you like talking, like I like to do, and you just like educating people, I feel like this is a good one for you. If you like, um, if you just like um, being part of somebody's journey, because as a lecturer, I feel like you're also part of your student's journey as well. So if you just like to participate in people's, you know, journey to greatness, you might actually just love being a lecturer. I know that for this role, a lot of them will request for um, a postgraduate degree. Some would even request for not just even, you know, for postgraduate degree, it could be master's degree or doctorate degree. So some would actually be very, very specific about a doctorate degree. And I've seen some offers that would actually just specify master's degree. Like they don't even mind someone who has a master's degree in nursing. But then in addition to that, they will request for a postgraduate diploma in education. So if you like lecturing job. Or if you just like to teach, you like to educate people, but then you are stuck on the bedside and you really like you you're really passionate about lecturing or teaching in the university, you might just want to get your master's degree done. And when you're done with that, maybe you go for a doctorate degree. Or in the meantime, just get another postgraduate diploma in education and then you can apply for um lecturing jobs in in universities specifically for nursing okay guys so that's that about that i want to believe that i've been able to help you guys especially those of you that do not like the bedside people like me who do not like bedside nursing you don't like working on the world you really just you don't have the passion for that i feel like if you if you've watched this video you know religiously you should be able to pick out one or two specialties that will fit your situation that will fit your passion and um, that will fit your present, you know, um, scenarios or circumstances. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. If I yet subscribe, you know what to do already. Subscribe to my channel. You want to click on the notification bell so you'd always be notified when I put up amazing videos like this. You also want to, you know, send my videos to your loved ones, your friends who are nurses, your relatives who are nurses, who are probably in the UK or thinking of coming to the UK. And you don't even have to be in the UK. I feel like this video is for everyone, regardless of where you live. I mean, all nurses, regardless of where you live or where you reside. Okay, I think I'm talking too much. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.